Good evening, God's Prayer Warriors, brothers and sisters. This is Brother Felix here. And tonight we are going to be reading John chapter 18, verses 1 through 27. John chapter 18, verses 1 through 27. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ's Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I thank you for today. I thank you for my life, my wife Teresa, my beautiful children Emmanuel, Ariana, Carlos Felix, and Luis Enrique. I thank you for dying for us on the cross for our sins. I thank you for loving and forgiving us. I give you thanks for all your prayer warriors and all my brothers and sisters that will watch this video. Lord God, I ask what I always ask. In the name of Jesus, may there be at least one verse for each one of our ears. That would be two verses per head. And when we hear that, vo that verse spoken to us, may the Holy Spirit stir inside of us. And may we have the courage to apply that verse to our life. In the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ's Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, John chapter 18, verses 1 through 27. Jesus completes his mission. Jesus is betrayed and arrested. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side, there was an olive grove, and he and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the grove, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, who is it that you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas, the traitor, was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again, when he asked them, Who is it that you want? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth, I told you that I am he. Jesus answered, if you were looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servants, cutting off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, Put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Ananias questions Jesus. Then the detachment of the soldiers with its commander and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him first to Ananias, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jews that it would be good for one man died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus because this disciple was known to the high priest. He went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back spoke to the girl on duty there and brought in Peter. You are not one of his disciples, are you? The girl at the door asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold and the servants and officials stood around a fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and his teaching. I have spoken openly to the world, Jesus replied. I always taught in synagogues or at the temple. 
where are the Jews, where all the Jews come together. I said nothing in secret. Why question me? Ask those who heard me. Surely they know what I said. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby struck him in the face. This the way you answer the high priest, he demanded. If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify as to what is wrong. But if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? Then Ananias sent him, still bound, to Caiaphas, the high priest. Peter denies knowing Jesus. As Simon Peter stood warming himself, he was asked, You are not one of his disciples, are you? He denied it, saying, I am not. One of the high priest's servants, a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the olive grove? Again, Peter denied it. And at that moment, the rooster began to crow. These are the words of our Lord, our God, brothers and sisters. Amen. Let's break it down a little bit. Verse 3. So Judas came to the grove, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. The officials from the chief priests and Pharisees were probably members of the temple guard. They were Jews given authority by religious leaders to make arrests for minor infractions. The soldiers may have been a small contingent of Roman soldiers who did not participate in the arrest but accompanied the temple guard to make sure the matters didn't get out of control. Verses 4 and 5. Jesus, knowing that that knowing all that was going to happen to him, he went out and asked them, Who is it that you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas the traitor was standing there with them. John does not record Judas's kiss of greeting, as in Matthew chapter 26, verses 49, Mark chapter 14, verse 45, and Luke chapter 22, verse 47, 48. But Judas's kiss marked a turning point for the disciples. With Jesus' arrest, each one each one's life would be radically different. For the first time Judas openly betrayed Jesus before the other disciples. For the first time Jesus' loyal disciples ran away from him in Matthew twenty six verse fifty six. The band of disciples would undergo severe testing before they were transformed from hesitant followers to dynamic leaders. Verse 6. When Jesus said, I am he, he drew back, they drew back and fell to the ground. The men may have been startled by the boldness of Jesus' question or by the words, I am he, a declaration of his divinity in Exodus chapter 3, verse 14, or perhaps they were overcome by his obvious power and authority. Verse 10 and 11. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off the right ear. The servant's master was, the servant's name was Mal Malchus. Jesus commanded Peter, put away your sword. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Trying to protect Jesus, Peter pulled the sword and wounded the high priest's servant. But Jesus told Peter to put his sword and allow God's plan to unfold. At times it is tempting to take matters into our own hands to force the issue. Most often such moves lead to sin. Instead we must trust to God to work out his plan. Think of it, if Peter had his way, Jesus would not have gone to the cross, and God's plan of redemption would have been thwarted. The cup means suffering, isolation, and death that Jesus would have to endure in order to atone for the sins of the world. Verses 12 and 13. 
The detachment of soldiers with its commanders and the Jewish officials arrested Jesus. They bound him and brought him to the first NS, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Jesus was immediately taken to the high priest's residence, even though this was not the middle of the night. The religious leaders were in a hurry. They wanted to compensate the execution, to, to complete the execution before the Sabbath and to get on with the Passover celebration. This residence was a palace whose outer walls enclosed a courtyard where the servants and soldiers would warm themselves around a fire. Both Ananias and Caiaphas had been high priests. Ananias was Israel's high priest from 6 AD to 15 AD. When he was depressed by Roman rulers, Caiaphas answered, Caiaphas, Ananias' son-in-law, was appointed high priest from AD 18 to AD 36-37. According to Jewish law, officials office of the high priest was held for life. Many Jews therefore still considered Ananias the high priest and still carried him by that title. But although Ananias retained much authority among the Jews, Caiaphas made the final decisions. Both Caiaphas and Ananias cared more about their political ambitions than about their responsibilities to lead the people to God. Through religious leaders, they had become evil. At the nation's spiritual leaders, as the nation's spiritual leaders, they should have been sensitive to God's revelation. They should have known that Jesus was the Messiah, about whom the about whom the Scriptures spoke, and they should have pointed the people to him. But when deceitful men and women pursue evil, they want to eliminate opp opposition instead of. Honestly evaluating Jesus' claim based on their knowledge of Scripture. These religious leaders sought to further their own selfish ambitions and were even willing to kill God's Son if that's what it took to do it. Verses 15 and 16. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus because this disciple was known to the high priest. He went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. The other disciple is probably John, the author of this gospel. He knew the high priest and identified himself to the girl at the door because of his connections. John got himself and Peter in the courtyard, but Peter refused to identify himself as Jesus' followers. Peter's experience in the next few days would change his life. Verse 19. Meanwhile, the high priest questioned Jesus about his disciples and teaching. During the night, Jesus had a pretrial about a, a pretrial hearing before Ananias, before he was taken to Caiaphas, and the entire Sanhedrin. Mark, chapter fourteen, verses 53, 53 and sixty-five talk about this. The religious leaders knew they had no grounds for charging Jesus, so they tried to build evidence against him by using a false witness. You can read about that in Mark chapter 14, verses 55 through 59. Now verse 22 through 27. When Jesus said this, one of the officials nearby struck him in the face. This what this the way you answer the high priest, he demanded. If I said something wrong, Jesus replied, testify to what is wrong, but if I spoke the truth, why did you strike me? That then Ananias sent him, still bound to Caiaphas, the high priest. As Simon Peter stood warming himself, he was asked, "Are you not one of his disciples? Are you?" He denied it, saying, "I am not one of the high priest's servants." 
a relative of the man whose ear Peter had cut off, just cut off, challenged him. Didn't I see you with him in the olive grove? Again, Peter denied it. And at the moment, a rooster began to cry, to crow, crow. We can easily get angry at the Sanhedrin for their injustice in condemning Jesus, but we must remember that Peter and the rest of the disciples also contributed to Jesus' pain by deserting and disowning him. You can read about that in Matthew chapter 26, verse 56 and 75. While most of us are not like the religious leaders, we are like the disciples. For all of us who have been guilty of denying that Christ is Lord in vital areas of our lives, or of keeping secret our identity as believers in times of pressure. Don't excuse yourself by pointing at others whose sins seem worse than yours. Instead, come to Jesus for forgiveness and healing. The other three Gospels say Peter, Peter's three denials happened near a fire in the country in the courtyard house, Caiaphas' palace, John's places, the first denial outside Anna's home, and the other two denials outside Caiaphas' home. This is very likely the same courtyard. The high priest's residence was large, and Nias Caiaphas undoubtedly lived near each other. Imagine standing outside while Jesus, your Lord and Master, is questioned. Imagine watching this man whom you have come to believe is a long time awaited Messiah being abused and beaten. Naturally, Peter was confused and afraid. It is a serious sin to disown Christ, but Jesus forgave Peter. In chapter 21, verse 15 through 17, no sin is too great for Jesus to forgive if you are truly repentant. He will forgive even your worst sin if you turn from it and ask his pardon. This fulfilled Jesus' words to Peter after he promised he would never disown him. In Mark chapter 14, verse 31, and John chapter 13, verse 38. It's a good reading tonight, brothers and sisters. Let's end in prayer. In the name of God, the Father, Jesus Christ, Son, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit, I just thank you for today. I thank you for your prayer warriors. I thank you for all the blessings you've given us, Lord, for forgiving us for our sins, for giving us a discerning heart, for filling us with your Holy Spirit and remove any evil inside of us and destroy the evil. I ask that you continue to keep us healthy, happy, and safe. I ask that you just heal us of any sicknesses, diseases, viruses, cancers, diabetes, arthritis. I ask right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you heal us. And I ask that you heal us of any addictions either that we or our family have. I love you, Jesus. I love you, God. I love you, Holy Spirit. I ask that you continue to keep my sister safe and help her recover from her surgery. I ask you to be with my mother and help those blood clots that she has in her leg dissolve. And I also ask you to help Brother Brian in county jail. And may you bless everyone on C Block and bless his wife Monica and their children. I ask all these things in the name of God the Father, Jesus Christ, Son, and the Holy Spirit. All right, brothers and sisters, it's late, so good night. I love you guys. I hope you guys got some good reading out of tonight's verses. We will continue again tomorrow. Good night, guys.